Okay, if I get everybody to take a seat, we'll uh, we'll go ahead and get started this evening with the uh, meet and or elect Mike Tim Sheriff town hall meeting. I'd like to first uh, thank all of you for attending the meeting. Um, what I'd like to do first is, is go over a little bit about myself and, and my uh, credentials, if you will, uh, where I've been, what I've done, both educationally and professionally, and uh, then uh, a little bit about personally, and then we'll go in, we'll open it up into a question and answer forum. So again, thank you, uh, thank you so much for attending, and uh, I'll go ahead and <clears throat> go ahead and get started. Uh, I was born in 1958, so if you do the math, that makes me a mere 52 years old. Uh, raised in Fairfax County, Virginia, attended public schools in Fairfax County. Um, my father is retired from Fairfax County Police. I have a lot of law enforcement background in my family. Uh, the young lady that I ultimately married when I met her was a Virginia State Trooper, and uh, one of my brother-in-laws is also in law enforcement in Harrisonburg, Virginia. So the thin blue line runs pretty wide in my family. Uh, after I graduated from public schools in, the, in Fairfax County, I did uh, construction work for the school division up there for about 13 years. Um, the whole time I was fishing Lake Anna off and on on the weekends, really enjoyed it down here, wound up buying a piece of property, and ultimately decided to migrate down south to pursue the career that I always had in the back of my mind was to follow my dad's footsteps. Uh, he did some 40 plus years in some capacity in law enforcement, either uh, enforcement, uh, training, or uh, the state uh, entity of overseeing training of law enforcement officers, which is DCJS. He was employed in some capacity, and I always had aspirations to, uh, to follow that, that history. Uh, however, I didn't want to do it at the department that he was retired from because I didn't want to anybody to say, are you going to measure up to the cop your dad was? I wanted to come down and set my own, uh, my own pace, if you would, in a new area. So I did. I bought a piece of property in Spotsylvania, uh, moved down here with the plan of, of building a home. Uh, and I, I put in many applications to various departments, and Spotsylvania called me first, and I accepted a job within Sheriff T.C. Waddy in spring of 1989 is when I began my career. Uh, quickly completed the Criminal Justice Academy, uh, was assigned to the patrol division, and rose through the ranks uh, to sergeant under Sheriff Waddy, uh, then followed by Sheriff Ronald Knight, who promoted me two times, once to lieutenant, once to captain, where I ran the patrol division for him. And then the entire time was uh, served side by side, with either in the same department, or uh, he was in Fredericksburg City with our current Sheriff Howard Smith. Um, we've known each other for some 22 years and have worked side by side for a long time. Uh, when he made his bid for sheriff, uh, he asked me at that point to uh, be his chief deputy, which I was uh, very elated at and accepted graciously. Uh, and I've been his chief deputy for seven and a half years now. Uh, he has mentored me, mentored me, tutored me, and uh, I think uh, prepared me well for uh, the challenges ahead. Uh, so again, I rose through the ranks. Uh, in 2009, after a reorganization of the sheriff's office where we uh, took charge of uh, animal control, uh, he promoted me then to lieutenant colonel, which is the rank I hold today uh, in one of the finest and most professional sheriff's offices in the Commonwealth. Um, as far as educational accomplishments, I did a, a associate's degree through Germanic College in police science, followed immediately by a four-year degree at VCU uh, in criminal justice, followed immediately by a master's in public administration at VCU. Um, and then I took a little five-year hiatus, which was somewhat of a mistake. I uh, went back then for a PhD. Uh, I was partway through the PhD when uh, 
Sheriff Smith announced his retirement, and obviously I put uh, the goals of the department and myself ahead of the PhD, and I've stepped out of the PhD program, and, and now I'm a full-time politician, if you will. Uh, been to various different executive level management and training schools put on by FBI National Academy Associates, uh, Southern Police Institute, a lot of other different entities. Um, my engagement with the community is uh, fairly broad. I, I, uh, I attend St. Matthew's Catholic Church, so I, I am also a member of the uh, Knights of Columbus Bishop Keating Council, uh, where I'm soon to be uh, elected as Chancellor of the Council, which is quite an honor. I'm a member of the Lake Anna Civic, Lake Anna Civic Association because that's where the wife and I have our home. Uh, a member of the Golden Key National Honor Society because of my educational grade point averages. Uh, Phi Kappa Phi, again, grade point averages. Um, engagement with the profession. A, members, a member of all of the professional organizations, Homicide Investigators Associations, uh, and, and, and the FOP, uh, Virginia Sheriff's Association. I'm happily married to my bride who's out in the audience this evening. Cheryl for, uh, this says 18 years, but we just had an anniversary last night, so it's now 19 years. Um, and we have a, uh, a home at, at Lake Anna in the western end of the county. Um, my vision for the sheriff's office is something I think a, a lot of folks are concerned about. We're, we're, in a, we're in some troubling times right now with not only the economy, but criminal activity. And we read about it in the paper day in and day out. It's on the upswing, although I am proud to say over here on the table to my left, your right, are a lot of things, two of which are articles. One's an editorial from the paper if you care to take a copy of that. But more importantly is an article that appeared recently in the Freelance Star that shows the crime trends in Spotsylvania are actually down. And uh, you know that's attributable to a lot of things. Uh, one of which is a, a good professional law enforcement agency. So I would suggest and recommend that if you're interested in reading it that you take a copy. So the future of the Sheriff's Office. <clears throat> I'm proud to say that under Sheriff Smith we have accomplished horrendous feats. He has led us through and to uh, accreditation of your Sheriff's Office. Um, and, and more importantly, a reaccreditation four years later uh, of your sheriff's office. The the last reaccreditation under Sheriff Smith's uh, tutelage and, and leadership was uh, no files returned, which is a monumental feat in and of itself. Uh, that really says a lot about the uh, the sheriff's office and and where we've come from, but more importantly, where we strive to go to. Uh, he he's, has pointed the ship in the appropriate direction, and I would just like to, to try and continue to, to skipper the vessel in, in the same direction. Uh, my aspirations are to try and, and uh, attain national accreditation, which is, it, it's another monumental feat. But what it does for the county, and more importantly the taxpayers, is it, it makes the, the department much more civilly defensible in that if there is an unfortunate act committed by one of the officers on duty and the county is sued, quite naturally the county is always named in the suit because they have the deepest pockets. Um, and that ultimately leads right directly to the taxpayers. So by making the agency more professional in its conduct and its day-to-day -day handling of activities that are, are expected of a law enforcement agency, it makes the, the agency that much more civilly defensible, which in essence protects the taxpayer's pocketbook. If, if uh, inappropriate activity occurs, someone's civil rights are violated, and someone threatens civil suit, attorneys will say, well, is it an accredited agency? Yes, how is it accredited? The higher levels of accreditation, the less apt they are to pursue a civil suit against you. It just, it, 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 what it does is it sends a message to the public that they are professional in their activities, they say what they're doing, they do it professionally, and they prove that they're doing it that way time and time again. 
So that's what the accreditation process is about. That's one of my visions. Uh, more visions about what I'd like to do is, is add more emphasis on community engagement. This can be done in a lot of ways. Uh, at one point in time, the county had a citizen review budget committee that reviewed all of the county department's budgets. And they've since done away with that. And I think that was somewhat of a mistake. Uh, but I would like to have some citizen input on the, on the budget, a review process, if you will, that uh, affords the citizen a little input on where their tax dollars are being spent. And, uh, you know, do we really need things that we're asking for? And I want the taxpayers to be able to question me why do you need that? Why is, why is the overtime line item so high? Why is this so low? Whatever the questions the community has on their mind, I'd like for them to be able to, to ask me those uh, in some sort of a review situation of the, of the budget prior to its approval through uh, county administration. Secondarily would be a, uh, a citizen component on certain review panels for complaints against officers. And that's you know, that's, that, that explains itself. If we have complaints against officers, I, I, I might solicit some suggestions and inputs from citizenry regarding uh, the complaints against deputy sheriffs. And, and so that I am not seen as the sole decision maker on uh, whether they're retrained or, uh, you know, sent for, for additional training or uh, whatever the you know punishment may be, or it could be an accolade if they've done something well. Um, so I would be looking for citizen insight on that process as well. And the reason I would like to do that is I think it builds trust in the sheriff's office within the community. And without trust, we're sort of stagnant and, and, and just dead in the water in my opinion. We've got to have the trust of the community to build upon, uh, and I think these are are some good stepping stones to do that. I'd like to actively recruit, which we have been successful in doing for our Citizens Academy. That was started under Sheriff Smith, and we have quite a few alumna that I would like to continue to add to that process. It's a great program that, again, educates the citizenry about what it's like to be a deputy sheriff. They actually get to come and participate uh, in the citizens patrol after they've served enough uh, time and training and uh, again it's that trust the factor of trust out in the community that we would be building by increasing the citizens academy alumna so i'd like to like to really build up that ramp up that program um, and and then the next thing would be to create a willing pool uh, or a cadre of citizen volunteers to come in and help out uh, to maybe free up some staff time to go and do other things that need to be done. Um, data entry and things like that uh, where it's appropriate. I realize a lot of our stuff is, is confidential, but there is a certain amount of stuff that can be done by citizenry if they're contacted and willing to come in. And, and I know there's a, a lot of people out there that are willing to invest their time in uh, many volunteer situations. And again, that tends to build trust uh, with the sheriff's office out in the community, that we trust the citizens enough to, uh, to involve them and engage them in our activities. And then lastly, the, the last thing I'd like to continue is the, the professionalism that was started by Sheriff Ron Knight and continued by Sheriff Howard Smith. Um, we have an outstanding department. <clears throat> I know the Sheriff Smith is very proud of every individual that wears the uniform in Spotsylvania County. And rightly so, because we really have outstanding people in our employment. Um, they're to be commended for the job they do every day, day in and day out, and it makes his life and my life somewhat easier just uh, because of the professional staff we have. So at this point in time, I'd like to open the floor up for <clears throat> any questions that you all might have. If I don't have the answer, I will certainly get an answer for you and uh, get your contact information and name and number, and I will get back to you with an answer. But hopefully I'll be able to, to provide answers this evening. 